Is it true that giant robots dive into the ocean to fix your internet? Yeah, sometimes. There are more than a million kilometers of fiber optic cables carrying our data from one place to another. In fact, this video is probably traveling to you guys over, you know, fiber at some point. It's not just on the bottom of the ocean. It's, you know, a lot of the big interconnects between cities and things. They are just so fast and most of the time so reliable that that's the real basis for the internet. Even if I don't have fiber internet? Yeah, that's how it gets long distances. The last mile might just be a cable modem, but it's probably fiber bringing internet to your phone company, even if they're giving you DSL or, or wireless. What's going to the cell phone tower? Probably fiber. Even if you use Starlink or 5G? In both cases, it's wirelessly going, right? Mm -hmm. So Starlink, it's hitting the satellite and then coming down to a base station. But how does that base station then get on the internet? Probably fiber. And if not fiber directly, it'll be some kind of cable going to some bigger internet service provider. That's probably using fiber from there. So yeah, even using a satellite, you're almost definitely using fiber optics. So you said these cables are in the ocean. How deep are we talking? Some of them are pretty shallow, but they run deep. I mean, they're going all the way across the ocean, so they go down trenches and stuff. Some of these cables are miles down. So the actual fiber optics are these little thin threads of glass. So what they'll do is in one of these cables, they'll have a bundle of a huge number of them. It's so expensive to run the cable, sending the ship, rolling it out, that the little thin thing of glass is not much of the cost. So they'll actually put huge amounts down, more than they think they need. And now they wrap it in armored sheaths. You know, they're literally trying to protect it from being pulled on, being crushed, going down the valley, being bitten by sharks because that happens. Sometimes sharks decide to try to chew their way through a cable. So now they're shark proof. There's an armored sheath around these cables. Sharks can sense electrical signals. So that... That's what they think, that they might actually be attracting the sharks by accident because they get bitten by sharks more often than you'd expect. Earthquakes too, I'll bet. Yeah, not so long ago, there was an undersea one. And so there was an avalanche off the coast of Africa that ended up taking out a bunch of cables at the same time. So a real disaster. I mean, they had backup cables, but they all got t taken out by the same avalanche because they weren't that far apart. Are these cables a recent invention? Sounds pretty high tech. Believe it or not, it was back in the 1800s that we started running undersea cables for telegraphs. Oh. That, 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 that. And so they've been upgraded a lot. Although now even the fiber has been a couple decades. You know, they just keep getting faster and faster. And at this point, they can put so much data, right? They fire a laser down the fiber optic cable and it can go really, really far before it needs a repeater. I mean, there's essentially no loss on these cables. They're just kind of amazing. Are there any concerns with having cables this fragile being the backbone of the internet all the way at the bottom of the ocean? Yeah, there sure are. Of course, there's the natural stuff. I talked about avalanches and things like that, and that happens. But more and more, there are hints of sabotage, especially, you know, around Northern Europe. There have been a number of incidents lately with, you know, Chinese and Russian ships sailing by and then suddenly fiber optic cables being cut. If a ship accidentally leaves down its anchor and starts sailing, one of those would just rip through a fiber optic cable by accident. Certainly some of them have been accidents, but some of them seem very suspicious. And I know there's real disagreements in the intelligence community on which ones different countries think were suspicious and which they think were accidents. So for example, Egypt is a major choke point for these cables. So according to Wired, back in June 2022, a cable got cut in Egypt and it was a disaster. And the reason is that Egypt is one of the centers, right? Because it's what connects the Mediterranean to the Red Sea. And of course the Red Sea connects the Indian Ocean. So unless you wanna go all the way around Africa, right. if you wanna connect something in Asia or in Australia or in Africa to Europe, you go through Egypt. and. In June, the cable got cut, which means seven countries in Africa lost their internet. 90% of Ethiopia had no internet at all. Disaster. When, when you say no internet at all, this is not just no broadband. This is no cellular, nothing. Like well, right. I mean, they're, the cell phones, you know, they could connect to the tower, but the tower couldn't make it to any website in Europe or any website in Asia, which is pretty much every website, right? right. They were really, really cut off. There are in fact 16 major fiber optic cables going from the Mediterranean through Egypt mm -hmm. into the Red Sea. So there's all these different cables. So if anyone goes out, you're okay. But in fact, I mean, there's just one spot there in the Suez Canal 
where it's dangerous.、Mm-hmm. If if those sixteen cables get cut, I mean, world's practically cut into two internets, basically. So if these cables get damaged, how do they fix them? This is really cool. There are companies like ASN, Global Marine, Telxius, and these guys run big ships. That go around, and when a cable gets cut, they use lasers. So you you can bounce a laser down the fiber, and if it's broken, a little bit of it will reflect back. By timing the speed of light over glass, they know how far down the cable it was cut. They have the maps; they can go there. If it's in shallow enough water, they'll send divers down. But usually, it's not shallow enough water, so they'll send these big, you know, robots. Down to go pick up the cable and bring it all the way back to the surface, where they can cut it, clean it, splice on another end. Then they go get the other end, fish that to the surface. You know, tie a, a buoy to it so it doesn't sink. Once it's all right, let go, let it sink back down to the bottom. And so these cables get cut, and in a, you know a matter of days they can find it and fix it. So、wow. it's kind of miraculous. Although it's depending on who you are, it might be days without the internet、it、may not feel so miraculous to you. But it's cool stuff what they do. Yeah, that sounds really cool. But like with all these ways that these cables can fail catastrophically, do you see something like satellites replacing the need for it in the future? I do not. So the fiber optic cables, as I said, they have、mm-hmm. almost no loss. You can go so fast down on these cables.、Mm-hmm. The other thing about it is each of those threads has as much bandwidth as you could get in the best case shooting up to a satellite. So if you need more bandwidth, you just toss in one more thread, and you've doubled it. And in fact, they're not tossing one more, and they they toss in fifty more than they need. So they have so much bandwidth, it would be absolutely impossible to replicate that. Trying to bounce off satellites in space, and you know, bouncing off satellites in space, you have all this loss. You know, it's going through the atmosphere. You know, it could hit a cloud. You know, all, all, all these things, and it has to bounce back down. SpaceX, some packets get lost, and it slows things down. And that really doesn't happen up over fiber. A cable this big can have so many actual fibers in it. You, know, you, you simply can't imagine the amount of bandwidth. They can fit down one of these cables. It sounds like the solution is redundancy, basically, just more. Yeah, the answer is can go over. have so many cables that cutting a couple doesn't do anything, so it stops being worth it to cut a couple, and the problem just naturally goes away. But in these scenarios where a country like Ethiopia loses ninety percent of their internet for a while, could something like Starlink still be able to help while there is no yeah no cable access? Yeah, yeah. So normally, what Starlink does. Is you use the dish, it bounces up to a satellite, comes back down to a nearby base station somewhere within like a hundred, two hundred miles of you. That puts it on the internet, and that's not going to help you at all in this scenario because、mm-hmm. the base station's off the internet too. But Starlink fairly recently has added their space lasers, so you go up to the satellite, and it can actually laser to the next satellite that lasers to the next satellite. That comes down in a country that does have internet still, so they can keep you on. Now, of course, doing this reduces the bandwidth. You get a slower connection. The latency is much worse. But they added this to get to ships. They wanted to get internet to ships in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, the middle of Pacific Ocean, and there's no base station near there. It's pretty far between islands. So they laser over to another satellite. So you know, if you're doing that. You probably want to start laying down some rules of cutting off Netflix, cutting off YouTube. Don't let people do video calls, but then they can still text and email, and it's slower, but you'd be on the internet. So it's a solid backup option. Backup option is right. If a bunch of those redundant cables all get snipped at the same time. Yep. And again, you know, I think if people are doing it on purpose, the more backups you have, the less worth it is for your enemy to try to cut the cables if it's not really going to knock you off the internet. Then they don't bother. So you know. Best defense is massive redundancy. It makes sense. So hypothetically, could you use Speedify to bond multiple of these cables together? Multiple of these fiber optic cables? Yeah. These threads, they're well into the terabits speeds. So it wouldn't actually make sense to bond multiple fiber optic cables together with Speedify for extra speed. They're already so fast, you can't max them out with your computer. But You need backups. What if the fiber gets clipped? You want to be able to instantly route around to your Starlink, to your tethered cell phone, to your whatever other connections you have, so that if you lose the fiber, you're still online during your important live streams and video calls and things like that. That's where it makes sense to use Speedify with fiber. But you know, these actual fiber trunks coming across the ocean—they are so fast. Your computer can't keep up with it, with or without Speedify. <laughs> 
If you like this video, subscribe to our channel for more tech discussions like this one.